Of course kids are going to want to do this. The trouble is not that many of them are going to make a living. Bounce, 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 throw. They need other skills. And we convinced 23 companies like Xerox to adopt 23 schools. We gave them their kit apart. They went and played. They showed up in a gym in Manchester, New Hampshire at the end of that first experimental season. We had a great time. I asked all those companies, would they come back the following year? They all said, Dean, it was incredibly hard work. It was all night and all weekend. And, but following the lead of people like Paul Allaire, all of them said they'd come back if I gave them a bigger problem, more kids. All of them. But wait, there's more. I said, you're all a part of the big mafia of business. You guys have all the hundreds of thousands of engineers out there, talk to your friends. And it was convenient that Paul O'Leary was like the chairman of everything. And so he got us like 60 teams the next year, then 150, then 300, 500. As you heard, last year we gave out the kits in January to slightly over 14,000 teams. We had 85,000 engineers donating their nights and weekends for six weeks working with all these kids. We had teams show up. We didn't fit them in a high school gym this year. We'd outgrown that many years ago, and we started doing regionals. We had 43 cities, including New York City, in part due to the Dubno family and Josh Weston and others. But we had a, we had, in this city, we had, you know, your little Jacob Javits Center for our <laughs> event. But we finished in the home of the 1996 Olympics, the 72,000 seat Georgia Dome, where teams from 42 countries competed. The problem is, we're only in 8% of the schools. And so, the kinder, gentler me is no longer telling people, we gotta be in every school. I've been told I'm an unrealistic guy. 55% compound annual growth for 18 years. Is, I'm unrealistic, so we don't need to be in every school. We just need to be in the schools where you give a damn about the kids. <laughs> and I can tell you why, and then I will, will shut up, because you, Mr. Allaire said, he thinks, he's got some funny stories about me playing things. I'll tell one story, because it also gets to why I can show you the data is so good in first. After we've been at this many years, I went to Mr. O'Leary and said, you know, you've been at chairman for years. We've proven we could work. We've proved they come back. We've proved that the engineers get more out of it than the kids. They love being community leaders. We've proven that the teachers and the parents, everybody gets together. We're changing kids out. Now, it's time to get out quickly. We should get foundations to help us. They're big, they're conservative. You businesses have helped us up front. You rose to the occasion. We're gonna go to the Ford Foundation. Psst, psst. He was the chairman of the Ford Foundation. I thought I had an inside track there. And we went to see Susan Barrettford, Susan Barrettford, here in New York. And I thought this is gonna be easy. Look at all this growth, look at all these prestigious companies, look at my great board of directors. We're sitting in this room, and this is one tough woman. And she says, where's all your data? So I tell her about all the kids. And, Dean, you're a mathematician, right? You're a physicist, right? Yeah, well, the plural of anecdote is not data. <laughs> so I'm waiting for him to help me. Finally, she says, all right, I'm going to write a big check. Not one penny of this money, not one penny can go for more teams. Oh, you gotta let me, it was the biggest check we'd ever got. We get a lot of teams. No. She says, you're gonna go out and get some third party to get real, like publishable, quantitative data. There's a major university out there, Brandeis University. They do all sorts of social impact studies. We're gonna pay them. They're gonna go and do a longitudinal study, retrospect. They're gonna find peer equivalent schools where you've had first teams. And we'll see, does it really affect these kids? Ha could it have anywhere near the impact that you claim it has? I, you know, I said to her, these kids aren't building robots, they're building serious relationships with adults, they're building self-respect, they're changing their attitude about the world. And anyway, we used all her money to do that. He didn't help me very much. We, we used the money for that. He said, Dean, she's right. I don't need you to help me when they're right. I need, anyway, <laughs> so, we took the money and we did that. A few years later, the first year we grew into the Georgia Dome, the people that had spent a few years doing that study delivered it. 
I'll deliver it to anybody here that wants it. I think we have most of it on our website. Excerpts from that study include the fact that peer equivalent inner city schools, among women, they were 300% more likely to choose engineering as a career. Among kids that weren't going to college, the relative ratio was a factor of nine, 900% change in schools in terms of dropout rate, first team, non-first team. Piece of data after piece of data, the people that did it basically ended up giving this package to our board and said they've been doing social impact studies for 30 years. They had never seen an organization of volunteers that had this much impact on kids, ever. Within a couple of weeks after that, the Kaufman Foundation, I had never heard of them, they're out in the Midwest, they're all about entrepreneurship, says that was the most impressive data we've ever seen. You say it's $5,000 a team. We've got a couple of hundred schools here in Kansas. Multiply that by 5,000, that would be $2 million. Basically, they said, here's $2 million. We want you in every school. Now I'll take full credit for insisting that we do all those studies because you've got to get data, Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> anyway, I probably used as much time as I should. I would love to find a way to have all of you, where's Mr. Rohr? We'll meet you. We now come from high school. We started like every other sport. They needed junior varsity. Then we needed Little League. Well, we don't have Little League. We went to the Lego company and we have Lego League. And we have now the high school kids mentoring the little kids. And now we have junior first Lego League. And we're going to have hundreds of thousands of kids in that soon. And so between what you're doing at that end and what we'll do at the other end, we now have colleges, by the way. Colleges are adopting these high schools. We had 80 colleges adopt schools this year. We now require that the colleges, they want to put a field on the, a, a, a team on the field, go compete. Typically, we use the college field houses for our regionals in our 43 cities. We used Columbia till we outgrew it here. We now require that the colleges give us at least one full four-year scholarship for these kids. That's perhaps the greatest social triumph I've ever gotten. We now actually have universities, institutions of higher learning in the United States giving scholarships to scholars. It's a weird concept in this country, <laughs> but it could happen. And it's working. On April 15th of last year in the Georgia Dome, we handed out $11 million in scholarships to these kids that never would have thought about some of the world. So for all of the people that have helped us already, thank you. And for all of the people that haven't, we need to get together. And hopefully with CED, we'll find a way to do that. And I'm sure with Ron on the board and all the other people we have here, we'll find a way to do that. So thank you very much. <laughs>